Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be showing you how to process narrowband data in PixInsight. Um, I wanted to provide a tutorial on how to do it because I've never actually made a processing tutorial before. So I think this would be a good time to show you what I do and what my workflow is. Today we're going to be processing the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. I have a total of around 22 hours of exposure time with this object, so I think it would be a great um, demonstration object to show you how I edit and how I can get a good picture out of what I've captured. So let's go ahead and get started and I hope you enjoy. So to begin, I usually first go through Blink and I go through all my images to just check for like any type of abnormal images, like for like any trailing stars or any lighting artifacts in in a single exposure just to see and just to make sure um, none of that gets added in. So I'm just going to show you, luckily all of mine turned out okay. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to show you what you would do in that, in the case if you were to find something. So these are all my raw files here. Um, around 273 of them, each one's five minute exposures adds up to around, I think like two, 22 hours and 45 minutes or something. Um, so I'll go ahead and open all of them. So as you can see here, I have all my files that have been imported into Blink. And it starts with the HA file, O3, S2, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur. And as you can see, when I scroll through them, they're different, expo different brightnesses. Um, they're all the same exposure, same amount of exposure time, um, all the same settings. It, the only thing is that it's because they're not linearized with each other. In order to linearize them, you have to click this button here, which will do an automatic histogram transformation to all the images in this list. As you can see, they scroll through and they're all kind of crazy and different. So what we're gonna do is do that. Um, so if you wanted to see all the pictures at the same, I guess you would call exposure or stretch, um, you wanna click this button. So I wanna click it and let it apply the automatic display function. Okay, now that's done, um, we're gonna go ahead and scroll through the images. And as you can see, they are all the same exposure. Um, only thing that's different is the amount of detail and signal you get from these filters. So hydrogen always tends to be the most strongest out of all of them. Um, and then there's oxygen and then there's sulfur. And it goes in the same pattern usually, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and the same thing over and over and over again. So you can scroll through them as you can see the detail changes, which I think is kind of cool. You can see different kind, different um, types of detail is brought out. Oxygen is more of the background. You can see this is more like the silhouette of the object, and then you can see more of a glow, and that is the oxygen gases emitting that way of the light. And then sulfur, and then hydrogen again. And it looks like, yeah, it's kind of out of order, um, but you just gotta go through them, look for any, yeah, here's a satellite. There's a satellite trail. Um, usually you can leave those in. Uh, PixInsight will usually omit them when you integrate the images together. So now that you have all these images, let's say you removed a couple. Um, in order to remove them, you can select one and then you can click down here, close selected images and whatever images are selected are in orange. So if you want to select more than one, you can do this, hold shift and then scroll down and click. And then you have multiple images selected and then you can click remove or close selected images and it'll remove those from the list here. Um, this will not modify anything in your current directory. This is just a basically a preview. Same with the stretch, it will not modify anything in the preview in the in your directory or not change any of the images. Only way you can apply the changes is to re-export these images again. So if you want to if you want to export what changes you made, you can go down here and click save and copy selected files to new locations. So you have to select all again, go up. You can't do control A or command A, that doesn't work. So you have to go to the top, scroll down the bottom, shift, click, and then click the save selected image to new location. And then it will ask you where to save it to, and then you save them. Um, for now, I already did this. So we're gonna go ahead and skip this step, um, but I'm pretty sure you get the gist of it now. So now that you've exported all of your images from Blink, we're going to go ahead and start processing them. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using the script called Weighted Batch Preprocessing. 
It's a script that comes with PixInsight, which allows you to batch process any images without having to go through separate processes like image calibration, integration, and so on. It does it all in one sitting. So today we're gonna to be using obviously lights and then we're gonna be using darks for calibration. So let's first go ahead and add our light frames. So go under the lights tab and choose files and then go to your data folder and select all of your light images. So we'll scroll down here, select all 200 and whatever of them. Open. This will automatically categorize each image with what filter it's assigned to. So it found all the hydrogen images, all the oxygen, and all the sulfur. So once you have those, go under darks and make sure you have a dark library. If you don't know how to take a dark library, make sure you take it with your lens cap on and in the same temperature environment as you took the pictures in. So I have a cooled monochrome camera. I took my, these pictures at negative 15 Celsius. So I took my dark frames at negative 15 Celsius as well. So we're gonna go ahead and add our darks. So here I have all of my darks. Um, it's 40 darks. It doesn't matter what filter they're on, obviously, because the lens cap is on, so they're not having any getting any light anyways. So they're just at the same temperature. So then once you have the darks, make sure you have the lights, and then go over here and I, what I do is I for presets, I go under select and I apply maximum quality with no compromises. Just to verify that selected. Make sure you enable subframe weighting, image registration, local normalization, and image, and image integration. Um, I personally don't like auto crop, so I disable it here. And then in your output directory, you want to select what output it is. So I'm going to do, um, I'm going to create a new folder and call it demo weighted batch preprocessing. So that is going to export all of the data that it processes into this folder. So once you have all those files imported, all the settings set that you like, um, go ahead and go under post calibration. And if you want to enable drizzle, I definitely recommend it. It can help your image quality a lot. So I would just go under this, click whatever the first um, filter is, which is hydrogen. And then you can go and do enable here and make sure you set the scale to two because it's two X drizzle and leave everything else defaults. And then you can apply to all groups and that will enable the rest of them as well. So now you have two X drizzle enabled on all your filters. As you can see, it gives you a summary here, 22 hours, 45 minutes. It's a good amount of time for exposure. And, and yeah, that's about it. So now you can go ahead and click run in the bottom right. And then it'll, add, it'll verify you a summary of what you have set up. And then once you're ready, you'll hit continue. And then it's gonna go through and run this whole thing. And when it's finished, I will come back and continue. Okay, it is finished and we're gonna go ahead and exit out of here. It will pop, it'll tell you a summary that it's finished. You hit done and this will reopen and then you just hit exit and then everything is done. And then we're gonna go ahead and open our images. So I wanna go ahead and open our images in Finder or File Explorer, depends if you're on Windows or not. Um, go into the folder it exported as and then go under master. And here's all the masters. So we're gonna go ahead and open up each master. You wanna open up the two X drizzle ones cause that's what the drizzle is applied as. So you can hold command or shift and um, select each one. And then you can just drag them on the Pixin site and it'll open them up. So here is the images. Um, this is just a, a white, a weight image. You can get rid of this one. Um, this is the 2X drizzle for sulfur. So let's go ahead and do um, command A or control A on Windows. And this will stretch it on my brightness as you can see this is sulfur this is amazing look how strong that is looks so good um we'll go ahead and go ahead and minimize this um 
close out of this one again. This is oxygen. There's oxygen. And here is hydrogen, one of the best ones. Um, you can see a lot of detail here. And we'll go ahead and minimize this as well. So now that you have these three images, let's go ahead and linearize them with linear fit. Um, this is a process and just search for, search for linear fit. There it is. And you just gotta set a reference frame. I usually set it for the sulfur master. So it'll linear fit it to sulfur. So S2, select S2, ignore these settings. You can leave them at the faults and open O3 and HA. And then what we're gonna do is drag and drop this process on each. And this will adjust their brightness to or this will adjust their stretch to match S2's, the S2 master. So there's that, you can leave it, minimize it. Same thing with oxygen. So the point of this process is to allow all the filters to be evenly equalized with each other. So you won't have any issues with color and extra color strength for example, the hydrogen, it tends to be stronger. And if you don't do this, your picture will be very green. Okay, awesome. So now that we have minimized those, we're gonna minimize this and we're gonna go ahead and do channel combination. And this will combine all of these channels into one RGB image. So assign R to S, G to H and B to O. That's the SHO palette or also called the Hubble palette. Um, this is probably one of the most popular palettes to do. And then you hit apply here. And let's stretch this image. That looks pretty good. Personally, I do not like, um, I do not like the green, how much green there is. So what I usually do next is under process, I do SCNR. Here it is. Um, it removes green. You can move any color really, but I choose it's default to green. And I moved, I usually move this slider down to around like 55% and then you just drag it on. And then it looks a little more, I guess, natural. Minimize that. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and open up histogram transformation. This allows you to permanently stretch the image and make it so it's permanently like how you see it. So open up this one and select this image, which is image 07 from here. Hit the reset button just, just in case. And then you want a preview of it. You want to do preview, which is the empty hollow circle. This will open up a real time preview. And then you want to unstretch it. So make sure you're selected on this image here. And then you click this little button up here called this unstretches it. It resets the screen transfer makes it dark. Once it's dark, you want to pull the middle arrow to the left. And until you can actually get it as far as you can without without blowing it out. So like that. So you can see like a art with a little curve there. And then you want to do apply with the square. And then you want to reset with the arrows on the right side. And then once you've done that, you want to pull the left arrow into the right to where it just meets, it meets the end of, or I guess the beginning of the curve to the edge of the bottom left of the, I guess the graph. So once it meets that, you want to pull the middle arrow to the left and stretches it out. And then you kind of want to balance it out a little more, Kind of get a little more a little more detail in there without clipping too much of it because if you clip too much of it you'll lose a lot of a lot of color and detail kind of like that so you want to undo that i'd say that way is good stretch it a little more make it a little brighter i guess i think that's pretty good so then once you're done with that hit apply which is the square and that applies it Ignore this preview. This is just predicting of what it would be if you hit apply again. So you don't want to do that. So just X out of the preview. And this is what your resulting image is from screen transfer function. If you zoom in, you can see a lot of 
A lot of nice detail here. That's amazing. More up there. So at this point, you understand how to process and integrate narrowband data, um, just kind of like the basics. In the next part, I'm going to be showing you how to sharpen, remove noise, and fix the magenta star issue in this image. So stay tuned and I hope you learned something from this and I look forward to showing you more tutorials on how to process astro data.